Hello, this is my 2021 Yamaha Tracer 9 GT and I just wanted to go for a little ride and give you some of the pros and cons of the bike. I've had it since the summer now, so uh, you know, I just want to show a few things. So right now, you know, it's a little colder outside here in Pennsylvania and uh, uh, so, you know, things that I like about this bike and I'll go over uh, it, it does come with a heated grip so you can see right back here I can set it 1 to 10 and uh, so let's put it on 8 right now I think it's actually the it's gonna get in mid 40s uh, for this little ride uh, little things to to take into account uh, with the bike here I'll, I'll shut this off uh, so you can see for example when you look at the fuel gauge uh, it says it's full and but what happens is this big bar doesn't disappear until you're halfway empty so it would have been nice to have maybe a three quarters or two thirds you know so it just goes bam off in one shot once you get to about halfway so it may not be full right now that's what I'm saying so it's it's a little thing just to mention but apart from that uh, uh, you can see the display in this weather it's cloudy and everything it's I can see fine and uh, let's uh, let's take it for a little ride and I'll go over a few things so overall since the summer I've been pretty happy with the bike uh, you can see here the average has been about 50 miles per gallon so you know as, as expected and uh, of course that'll depend on how aggressive you are uh, I do like some spirited riding I'm not overly aggressive but uh, the uh, still 50 miles a gallon average is is really good uh, for me in any case for this type of bike uh, a few more things to talk about looking at the dash uh, you can see here it says A2 and that's the uh, suspension mode so A1 is more sporty and A2 is a little more uh, compliant and frankly for the roads I have here the A2 is actually nice it, uh, it, it, it really is nice and compliant and uh, you know I don't find a lot of reasons to go on A1 so my motorbike before this was a Triumph Street Triple uh, the Street Triple R and you know I couldn't adjust suspension there and that was firmer than even this A1 which which is okay because that bike was really you know a precision bike in that sense but I find that it's not really overly necessary to, to have that that's the reason I upgrade for this bike uh, basically you know a little more comfort and uh, heated grips and hand guards all that so uh, so that's where you leave it typically on that A2 setting. In terms of the engine, so the street triple uh, that I had, this is also a triple. I assume that the uh, you know MT09 or FZ09 as it used to be called was the competition to the Triumph Street Triple. They both have uh, uh, the uh, I think the 900 versus the uh, Street Triple 765. And uh, you know, I think this is based on the same engine as that MT09. And what I like, though, compared to my Street Triple, is I seem to have a little more torque lower, lower down. So just in everyday traffic, getting going, it's just a little smoother. The Street Triple like to live in the 8,000 and up range to make it really, really, uh, you know, exciting. Let's put it this way, which you don't want to do that all the time. Uh, now this bike will be lively at those revs as well uh, that's certainly not an issue and, uh, and which is what I like which is why I like the triples like that uh, but what I'll do is I'll show you when I accelerate sometimes I find that in second gear there can be just a little hesitation as you get going and once you reach a 6,000 rpm then it seems to really take off and you can kind of hear that by the engine note as you go uh, so what I'll do is I'll just do a little acceleration run to, to show you what I mean. Uh, it's it's almost like a turbo lag <laughs> if this had a turbo. Uh, uh, 
in essence. But other than that, you know, it's it's quite responsive. Uh, and the bike does like to, you know, I think it's happy at low revs and it's happy at high revs. So all in all, you know, it's it's uh, Uh, let me go the other way. Some traffic here. Okay, here's a little run. So, first gear. Now listen to the second as I go. So that was with the quick shifter. So there seems to be just a bit, it goes and it really screams. Maybe that's just the way the South Force mapped, or it just seemed the street triple was a little more linear. But apart from that, no problem. I mean, it's it's very responsive. Uh, you know, third gear and twisting is really nice. Fourth gear is really nice. Uh, it's, it's responsive. So overall, I really like the engine. I like the engine note as well. Uh, the other thing too is the quick shifter. So I'm in six now. Let me go down. You can really smooth. Uh, the quick shifter goes up and down. On my uh, street triple, I can only go up. I had to install that. Uh, but this goes both ways like that. So it's I, I enjoy it in terms of. Uh, if you're in the twisties and you just want to, you know, not lose uh, any sort of engine momentum or revs, uh, that that's nice as well. Uh, just for having a little fun in straightaways to accelerate. Here's the fourth, like that quick shifter. Uh, yeah, it's 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 nice. Uh, no issues with it in in that sense. Uh, so again, a nice little bonus uh, with this uh, Yamaha. We'll go and take a few curves here. Uh, so overall, you know, in terms of why did I trade in my Triumph? Uh, for me, it's it's taking longer trips was a problem with the panniers or the side cases. You know, I had to get something velcroed, and and it's just. So having a side cases that come standard with the GT version of this bike was nice. Uh, the hand grips, the hand warmers are nice. Uh, the hand guards here are nice. Having a windshield, an adjustable windshield also. The Street Triple didn't have any of that. And finally, I think the cruise control option that comes as standard is really nice too. Especially on longer trips where you know, if you're only going through twisties, you just want to uh, keep it on that cruise control so your wrists are, you know, you don't, uh, you don't have that continuous force holding down the throttle. So overall, that's the reason why I wanted this bike, and I think, uh, you know, it's it's done really well. Uh, talking about the windshield, yeah, it's a little filthy right now, but you know, windshields are something that you can chase and spend a lot of money to replace. If you get a bigger one here, then you won't feel any wind and you may cook in the summer. You know, it's it's one of those things. Here, let's see if we can do a little jump here on this thing. I, I think it's jumpable. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, so you cook with a windscreen. Uh, you know what? But if it's too small, you may get buffeting. So the stock screen for me uh, I didn't get any buffeting, but I get a bit of turbulence. So adding this right here helped. You know, I can still get a bit of wind. I can make sure that uh, I put it all the way down if it's hotter in the summer. So I don't have a problem with it. I, if you get a, a screen that's way too short down to here, uh, yeah, you get a lot of wind, but depending when the screen ends up, uh, it may send the wind right under your helmet, and that's going to get loud. You know, I've chased windscreens on my other bikes before. I had an FZ7 and T07, and 
street trip all in. Jeez, it's never ending. So this this works. I'm happy with it. As for the comfort, uh, the seat works out nice too. Uh, I don't have an issue with the seat stock as it came. It's a lot better than the MT07 and the Street Triple for that matter. But I did get the comfort seat and that that is nice. That works out nice as well. And uh, you know, it lets you go a little longer without feeling that constant pain. But even on a longer trip that I took, I took an overnighter this summer uh, through the mountains. Uh, you know, it certainly was a lot better than the MT-07 and the Street Triple. Uh, you know, you get a bit uncomfortable, but it's not to the point where you feel that, oof, you know, you got to get off the bike and just massage yourself down there. So, also happy with that, uh, that aspect of the bike. So right now it's just a bit of drizzle and uh, but you know again with all the traction control and ABS and everything that the bike has I'm not I feel a lot more confident than my older bikes that had none of that uh, of course it depends on the person but I just like having all that So overall, I think for fifteen thousand uh, dollars, about the price of this bike, you get a pretty nice package. I think it's a little over 100 horsepower, a decent amount of torque, even at low revs. Uh, you know, and it, it comes with the heated grips, with the hand guards. It comes with the cruise control. It comes with an adjustable suspension. Uh, you know, what's the next step up? Well, you do have that Ducati Multistrada V4, but twenty-five thousand bucks. Uh, I think that gives you 160, maybe 170 horsepower. But there's a point where, uh, you know, what are you looking for in a bike? And for me, this is this is just plenty. It's just plenty for the street use, and uh, it's it's really nice. And I like the fact my other bike is a Triumph Speed Twin, so it's a 1200 Twin, and at 7,000 RPMs, that thing is done. Uh, so this, this is nice that you can take it to the high revs and just keep playing around in there. It's, it's just makes it feel more like you know, a naked bike, a sport bike uh, versus a bike that revs out at uh, 7,000 RPMs basically. So that gives you a taste for the engine noise, a taste for uh, what I like about the bike and why I'm glad that uh, I got it. So hopefully it's, uh, you know, this was useful for you just to get a taste of what the Tristan 9 GT is and from someone that's owned it since uh, for several months. Thank you.